What's happening, Pimp Game TV? What's happening? Your boy Delray, Platinum Artist, Platinum Songwriter, Straight Game TV. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Let's talk about this journey, man. Um, yeah. Very important. A happy Sunday night to everybody. Waiting for some more people to come up in here. Let's talk about it. No need to be animated. We're going to just talk about straight gang and, and, and see how it goes down. Let's go. DJ Clayton Bigsby. Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome up into the room, up into the chat. Robert Brown, Lafayette, Indiana, always in the building. What's happening, man? Bruce Lee, good morning from the UK. Appreciate you guys coming in, wherever you're coming from, North Carolina, Indiana. United Kingdom, B dot. Let's talk, it, man. It seems like um, the news, or should I say, the uh, coverage, since the O.J. Simpson death, uh, kind of took over the media um, conversation, if you will. The situation involving Diddy kind of calmed down, and um, as we can see, there was a lot of hoopla behind it but there has been no legal action actually filed. What's up, Shane Hawk, uh, Rondell Hartley? And um, so, you know, you see in the cycle how the media works, right? You know, you know, seems like OJ Simpson was getting demonized again, like it, like it happened yesterday um, from that perspective. Um, May OJ Simpson, uh, Nicole, Ron Goldman, all of them, may they rest in peace. But more importantly, what I come to talk about today is how the Little Rod situation went from a GoFundMe page, right, that a, that has raised approximately, what was that, $4,000, if you will, uh, as of April 11th, right, uh, Little Rod's GoFundMe page, in which his goal was $50,000. Uh, $50, so, what Little Rod said that P. Diddy owed him at that time um, is what Little Rod was trying to basically raise in his initial GoFundMe, right? So, and Little Rod's statement was at that particular time, Little Rod had said, you know, basically the GoFundMe, he was like, I find myself I'm fighting for my producers' rates, money, publishing shares, and royalties for works done on this project, uh, Jones uh, basically uh, pleaded for funding, right? Uh, for the better part of the past six months, my team and I have extended every opportunity we knew possible to have these matters addressed and resolved fairly in private. However, he said, uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs negotiation tactics to stall communications, dry out my funds, and have me negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here, right? I pay attention to that last part. I'm gonna read that last part again. Little Rod said that P. Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications, dry out my funds, and have me negotiation negotiating out of desperation or without without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. How I look at that. And that saying when he was going for the GoFundMe money, like I said, which has only um, generated approximately $4,965. It may have be a, maybe a little bit more at this particular time. I don't know. But the initial drive of was $50,000 in which Little Rod basically said that he was owed by Diddy. You know what I mean? Basically, Jones had claimed that he was being cheated out of over $50,000 for his work on on. on uh, P. Diddy's album at the time, the Love album, and among uh, his many allegations and accounts of troubling situation, uh, you know, basically he was saying that his life had been impacted, detrimentally impacted, um, you know, like why he was traveling with Sean P. Diddy Combs. But I go back to that initial statement that he had made. Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications, dry out my funds, and have me negotiating out of negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. 
And I say to my, I say to myself, force me where? It seems to me, if you look at the Little Rod lawsuit, and then you go back and look at the Cassie lawsuit, they kind of mirror each other, if you will. A lot of the allegations that were made in the Cassie lawsuit, who had a, a, a romantic relationship with P. Diddy for uh, some years, they had been together, I don't know how many years exactly, but they had been together for a while. But once the lawsuit was settled, um, then came the Little Rod lawsuit after that, if you will, right? And so I asked the question out of what the statement was in dealing with the GoFundMe. He said, uh, because of P. Diddy's negotiation tactics and trying to stall him out, you know, make him spend all his money and so on and so forth. That's why he was trying to raise the, the money, I guess, to file a lawsuit. But I find it ironic that the $50,000 um, that he was trying to raise on GoFundMe uh, matched the $50,000 that he had said that P. Diddy had owed him at that time, right? But he said that him not actually paying him the money that they were trying to negotiate in private has forced me here. And I question that because if all of the things that were alleged in the lawsuit actually happened doing out all of this time, I asked the question that if P. Diddy would have paid him the $50,000, would he have ever filed a lawsuit? Because he's basically saying the reason when he wasn't paid, you know, um, the re when he, you know, after he didn't, you know, found out he didn't get his money, he's saying basically him not being paid has forced uh, me here, right? And so the money, and he's admitting that the money forced him or the, the non-payment of money forced him here so my, my my question is at the end of the day this is what led to the lawsuit and all of these allegations the video i did the other day in which i pointed out the fact from the um affidavit that they had just filed right um that little rod had admitted that p diddy himself did not invite young girls or underage girls he made that a statement in his affidavit that uh, Justin Combs would bring younger girls because, you know, that's who he was dealing with, girls around his age and so on and so forth. Once again, we have not seen any evidence of any young girls or anybody that, you know, say that they were drugged from that perspective that was even at a Diddy party when you deal with this, this, um, this, these allegations, if you will. You know, so now. Rodney Jones, I mean, I'm sorry, Little Rod, uh, Rodney Jones is his real name, um, basically filed this lawsuit, which stemmed from not being paid, right? When P. Diddy's lawyer, uh, Sean Holly, at the time, they had came out and they made a statement. They basically, She basically said, we have indisputable and incontrovertible proof that the claims are complete fabrication. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones attorney a tyrone blackburn have been ignored we look forward to addressing these ridiculous claims in court and intend to take all appropriate action against all who are attempting to peddle them now i take it that they wanted to show video as we've seen when they went in p diddy's house when they um got the kids out of the room you could see those cameras in the house where they had them put their hands behind that head come out of the bedrooms or wherever they was located in the house, put them up against the wall and all of those things, right? I take it that there is video of um, Little Rod. They have video that they wanted to show Tyrone Blackburn of Little Rod actually being normal, probably kicking it with chicks, you know, people that at their time, now that they're considering to be these sex workers and all of these uh, other allegations, right, that they wanted to show to Tyrone Blackburn. But I don't think that they wanted to see that information because the information in itself, and once you know that, it would let you know that you really don't have a strong case, right? And so, so they basically, no, we don't want to see that. But then when you go deeper into it, you go deeper into it, they filed a, the, the affidavit that they filed basically repeats everything that they had filed in the case, which tells me that the case is not really as strong as many people uh, think it is. And it's a civil case, right? You know, like I said, once again, when you talk about the sex workers thing 
from that perspective. In Cassie's lawsuit, I can see where that would be something that would be detrimental um, in her just getting up there as a woman saying, hey, you know, this is what I was forced to do. These are the things that I was forced to, um, you know, do while he sat back and he watched and, and so on and so forth. You know, the carrying of a gun, all of these other um, accusations that she made. That's why it was settled so fast. Like I said, you know, Cassie must have had some kind of evidence, some kind of smoking gun that they didn't want to get out. Boom, that lawsuit settled. Then you see a lawsuit. Basically, I, would, I wouldn't call it a copycat lawsuit, but a lawsuit that basically mimics some of the same language um, that little Rod lawyer uh, Tyrone Blackburn placed in the civil case that he filed on his behalf. Right. But once again, we have went from. Fifty thousand dollars. Right. And the lawsuit was, was initially filed on February uh, uh, 26 from fifty thousand dollars old for publishing and producing or something like that. Now, Little Rod is now seeking thirty million dollars in restitution. Once again, where did that thirty million dollar number come from? The thirty million dollar number came from Cassie's lawsuit. So, it was like they took the Cassie lawsuit, mimicked it, and put Little Rod name in there, and basically, you know, alleged that he was forced to have sex with these sex workers like Cassie did, if you will, by putting Little Rod's name in there. When in fact, when he did his GoFundMe, right? And that this is what the, like I said, this is what makes it, it, it crazy, if you will. When he did the GoFundMe, he had mentioned nothing about that. He had mentioned nothing about that. And he's basically, he basically said that the lack of payment of his $50,000, he said, I find myself fighting for my producer share I mean, my producers rates money, publishing shares and royalties for work for work done on this project, meaning Diddy's album at the time. And so and he was pleading for funding. He's saying basically for the better part of six months, my team and I have extended our opportunity, extended every opportunity we knew possible to have these matters addressed and resolved fairly, but in private. Right. However, Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications dry out my funds and have me negotiation, negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. So I'm asking you guys, do you think that if Diddy would have paid him that $50,000, would we even be here? What's up, Carla Shepard? You know, you see that you see that the, the rhetoric has kind of calmed down now. You know, they not really it's not, you know, hitting on every news cycle. Like I told y'all the O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson dying and all of that. He kind of took over the news cycle for like a day and a half, if you will. You know, they kind of re prosecuted him in the media, if you will. Even after he was found innocent of the charges, like I said, despite what you think about. O.J. Simpson and whether you think he did it, whether you think he's guilty, not guilty. Right. At the end of the day, you know, it was seems like they were still trying to basically persecute him after his death. Leroy Miles, we know the affidavit is under oath. We understand that. We, we, we get that. Miss Matthews, she says she you you read the law, lawsuit. You think fifty percent uh, of it is um true, and the other. So what fifty percent do you think is true? And like I said once again, the lawsuit in fact does not. From what I understand, uh, the lawsuit in fact does not mention anything in regards to the publishing royalties or the producers' credits that he was initially uh, seeking, right? And so now, if you look at the Cassie lawsuit, you look at the language that was used in the Cassie lawsuit, right? And even they filed an amendment in which they mentioned uh, Prince, Prince Harry from the royal family, if you will. And so, you know, it kind of got, it, it, it kind of, you know, it was kind of preposterous, if you will. You know, they, they mentioned uh, uh, Prince Harry, um, you know, he, it's like 
it's like, you know, let's let's put people's name in here in order to try to get the media to pick up a little bit more what he's saying. So you mentioned people with with status, if you will, you know, Prince Harry, you know, um, Lucian Grange, um, you, you know, other executives and people like that and sports figures and so on and so forth. Right. So it seems like to me from fifty thousand dollars to thirty million dollars. And like I said, the $30 million number came from, as we all know, we, you know, a Cassie situation wasn't disclosed, but we all know that 30 million was an, a number that was alleged to be asked in Cassie's lawsuit, if you will. Right. So here we are. The, 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 the rhetoric has calmed down, you know, it's calmed down also, you know, you know, in 50 cents, baby mama, Daphne joy was named in there. Basically, they saying that they got a video of her Diddy getting a massage and by, you know, professional masseuse. And uh, uh, Little Rod said he has video of Daphne Joy massaging Diddy's feet. I mean, at best, she's a massage therapist, not a sex worker from that perspective. If that's going to be something that's going to be used in order to try to paint a picture of somebody who is not what they say uh, uh, she is involved in this lawsuit. Right. Another thing, like I said, once again, the salaciousness of it and saying that, you know, Sean P. Diddy Combs gave minus alcohol, you know, uh, sex workers at his home. Once again, people have been making uh, uh, an argument and saying, well, did he drug people? Right. There's no proof of that. He drugged anybody. People have been saying that. And like I said, you can believe it or not believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for some kind of evidence. You know what I mean? And if it if it happened at that particular time, I gave you all the timeline. Right. It was from February 2nd. Right. 2023 of last year. Right. When little Rod first said that something had actually happened to him. Like I said, February 2nd, 2023, little Rod said he, he was he was that was the first time something had happened and he was drugged. He think he was drugged by Diddy on February 2nd, 2023. Right. Then came July 2nd, 2023, when little Rod said that he was drugged again. The first time he said he woke up with two sex workers in the bed and Diddy and him in the bed. This is the first time. This is what he said. The first what first happened on February 2nd. Right. Then February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Right. June, July. What? Six months later. Right. March, April, May, June, July, five months later, five months later on July 2nd, 2023, Little Rod said basically that he was drugged again. And this time he woke up in the bed with uh, one sex worker, if you will. Right. And so. He's saying the first time he got pictures with the first two sex work sex workers in the bed, he took a picture of them in the bed from that perspective. Now, why he would do that. Right. I don't know, but I don't think he took a picture at that particular time of two sex workers in the bed to make an allegation. Think about that. Think about that. I want y'all to go back and you got to think about this. Check this out. So at the time that Lil Rod said he took pictures of the two set on February 2nd, 2023, Lil Rod said he took two pictures. I mean, a pictures of the two sex workers that were in the bed with him and Diddy when he woke up right now. At this time, everything was good. You know, he thought he was going to get paid for whatever reason that was. And he stayed around five months later to say that something else happened. But let's deal with February 2nd. He said he got pictures of the two sex workers that was in that he woke up that were in his bed along with Diddy being in the same bed with him and two sex workers. Right. He got pictures. So do you think that little Rod took those pictures with the intention of using those pictures in a lawsuit or he took to took the pictures because it was just two girls in the bed. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it, it would be something that you would be gathering evidence for if you felt like, you know, if you took two pictures, you just took two pictures of, you know, the girls in the bed. I don't think that was ever to be intended to be used in a lawsuit and where he would go and make an accusation and say, okay, cool. You know what? I got these two pictures 
that I can show you, Judge, in the court when they filed the lawsuit. Those pictures were not meant to be um, in any kind of lawsuit. You understand what I'm saying? And another thing, once again, one would need to be able to prove that the young ladies in the picture, right, whom he didn't say that they were underage, were actual sex workers. You understand what I'm saying? So now, that's on February 2nd, 2023. That little Rod says he has the picture of the two sex workers that was in the bed with him and Diddy when he woke up. And he said the first that's the first time he was drugged. Now, most people, with any kind of common sense, you know what I mean, felt like somebody drugged him, somebody did something to him. Yo, you know what? I'm out. You know what I mean? But no, little Rod didn't say, yo, I'm out. He proceeded to take pictures of the two girls that were actually in the bed with him and Diddy. Right. With not the intention at that particular time to file a lawsuit, because guess what? He waited five months again, five months from the first time he took those pictures. Right. It's five months later on July 2nd, 2023, in which he would then indicate in his affidavit that something else had just happened. I find that ironic. So how do we get to the number of 30 million? So on July 2nd, Lil Rod basically makes an accusation and says, hey, you know what? Um, it happened again. This time I woke up in the bed with one sex worker. Y'all don't find that ironic. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about, when we talk about what this is and what this means, you can kind of see clearly through it. Like I said, once again, you have a lot of people, you know, believing what they want to believe. Right? But Carl, it's not even fishy in itself. Just think about it, Carl. Two women in the bed on, on February 2nd, two women, y'all, he said he woke up. He said, first he said he was drugged. Okay. Like I said, I don't doubt what he's saying. I'm just questioning his actions after he said what he said had happened and staying around five months after that from that perspective, right? And then once again, taking a picture on February 2nd, 2023, that is now being alleged to be used in the lawsuit as proof that did he slept with sex workers or he had alleged sex workers at his house? alleged sex workers, because we don't know who these people are, right? Yet, from that perspective. So he takes the picture. Five months go by, I guess, I don't, I guess everything cool, and then all of a sudden on July 2nd, 2023, you know, the same thing allegedly happens. This time, he wakes up in the bed, unbeknownst to him, with a, uh, a sex worker, you know, and he don't know how he got there. Once again, this is the same thing. Now, after the first time you happen and you say, yo, he, you were drugged, you know, most people with any kind of common sense would have been gone. And you could have made an alley, uh, 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 some kind of police report if you felt like you were drugged and so on and so forth, you know, from that perspective. There was none made. So now we go from $50,000 in the initial GoFundMe, right, which was the money uh, he said that he was owed by Diddy. So that money, that money matches up. Now, once again, the $30 million is the, the money that Cassie was allegedly asking for from that perspective. Now, that same $30 million number is contained in Little Rod's lawsuit. What's up, Crystal Hope? What's up, Bullets Gotti? Uh, Yaya Kids, uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn, Frederico Davis. Like I said, most people are not really, you know, they they focusing on the salaciousness of what what was alleged in the lawsuit, right? So they go and bust the house. You know, we see everything that happened, but yet and still we have not seen any real concrete. Huh? Yeah, 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 call it, yeah. Like I said, we have really seen no concrete evidence that would point to anything that was done in regards to Diddy. Uh, uh, doing what they said that he did. I, 
I don't I don't believe that either. Like I said, once again, remember the, the, the pictures that were contained in the actual lawsuit when it was initially filed, basically stating that Diddy was um, they were giving uh, young girls alcohol and stuff. The young lady that was in there, she was a girlfriend of um, Justin, uh, Justin, a young lady that he was dating. And they showed other pictures right outside of that party, if you will. And so, like I said, once again, if you read what Little Rod had said in his GoFundMe, he's basically saying that did he not paying him the $50,000 at that particular time is what led him to actually go and file the lawsuit. At that particular time, there was nothing, you know, because in the GoFundMe, there was nothing mentioned about no sex workers. There was nothing mentioned about no, you know, uh, all of the other allegations and things that were named in the lawsuit. And like I said, when you look at the Cassie lawsuit and then you look at the, the little ride lawsuit, they kind of mimic each other. So it's like, you know, basically more so like a carbon copy of it. Once again, alleging that, you know, Little Rod was forced to do certain stuff with sex workers. Once again, in Cassie's lawsuit, the same thing was alleged that, you know, you know, she, you know, which I, which I believe, like I said, from her perspective. And not only do you believe what Cassie was saying from that perspective, but you can understand how fast the lawsuit was settled from that perspective. You understand what I'm saying? So let's be clear. Let's be clear. There has been no concrete evidence of anything. The girl, young Miami, right? They subpoenaed her, from what I understand, trying to actually see what she knows because she was talking about the other young lady, which I forgot her name, who was Diddy's girlfriend and talking about how she how she could make Diddy, make her um, uh, give her uh, head or whatever, if you want to call it, and so on and so forth. Now, Based on young Miami's uh, uh, words and what she spoke, that told me that these were willing participants in what you would say, I guess, threesomes or twosomes or, you know, watching, you know, two girls go at it, whatever you want to call it. Right. That's a, that's what when, when young Miami said that. And I read that that um, that post that she had posted when I read that, that didn't sound like anybody who was being forced to do anything that sounded to me like people who were willing to do what was, you know, expected of them. And it was all good as long as it was being taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. Carla. She had the real goods. And like I said, the proof of that is how fast it was settled. I, I think they said that was one of the fastest lawsuits that were ever, that was ever settled involving uh, a Hollywood celebrity, if you will, that was actually filed in court. You know, not, you know, from that perspective before filing, but actually filed in court. So, like I said, once again, I'm asking the question. Little Rod said in his GoFundMe, he was basically saying that, like, yo, um, you know, I find myself fighting for my producer's rates, money, publishing shares and royalties for works done on the project that he worked on with Diddy. And then later he says, basically. Uh, Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications, dry out my funds and have me negotiation, negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. He's saying that because Diddy didn't pay him his fifty thousand dollars, you know, his publishing shares and his royalties, it forced him to uh, come up with this lawsuit or forced him to sue him but not really asking for the things that he initially said that uh, uh, brung him to the place of where he wanted to file a lawsuit. It became this same thing that Cassie was saying, right? From that perspective. And basically when, when the lawsuit was filed, lawyers usually, they usually try to meet up and, and you know, come to some kind of terms in regards to what's going on. And uh, Little Rod's lawyer refused to meet with Sean Holly. Because they said they had evidence. And what I believe that evidence was, I believe that evidence is actual camera footage of Little Rod probably engaging in activities with these girls who they are now alleging that they're sex workers in a willful and uh, uh, um, consensual manner. I don't think it was anything that was forced as far as the women are concerned. Like I said, everything else is basically, you know, um, 
uh, allegations, if you will. That he was saying that, you know, he was touched on the anus and he was, you know, he was being groomed to be passed off to somebody else. Like I said, once again, on February 2nd, 2023, Little Rod said that he was first drug. He believed that he was first drugged by Diddy. And then after that, he was dizzy. He passed out. And then he woke up in the bed with two sex workers and Diddy was in the same bed with him. Right. That's February 2nd, 2023. Right. Then he doesn't look. He doesn't leave. He doesn't go nowhere. Don't call the police. Man, I was drugged. Y'all don't know what happened. You know what I mean? He doesn't do none of that. Then comes five months later. He's still around. He's hanging out. He's hanging out, you know, with Diddy at the mansion. You know, they taking yachts out to, to the Virgin Islands and they're doing all of these other things. Right. And then on uh, July 2nd, 2023, uh, Little Rod alleges that it happens again. Right. This time he wakes up in the bed with just him and one sex worker. But I'm taking y'all back to February 2nd after Little Rod said he woke up. He said he has proof in his affidavit of two sex workers in the bed with him and Diddy. But he took pictures just of the two sex workers. Diddy wasn't in the bed. Right now, if he had Diddy in the bed with the two sex workers, that would have been different. So what that tells me is. When you dealing with this situation with him saying, yo, I got pictures of the two sex workers in the bed. Boom. OK, were those were those pictures taken. As a memento. Right. Or were those pictures taken to be later used in a lawsuit to prove that the accusations that are now being made in the lawsuit? Because if people are taking pictures and things like that after, I guess what? activity you know sexual or otherwise you know you're not taking that to being used in a lawsuit you taking it like yo it's two chicks you know in the bed whatever whatever and you know you're just taking it as a memento then comes the lawsuit and now all of a sudden when you deal with that now the lawsuit comes in now little rod is alleging that yo i have pictures from that perspective that i can prove that i was you know that there was these people were sex workers that's on February 2nd, 2023. He was said he was drugged. He don't leave. He don't call the police. He don't do none of that. Man, let me let me ask y'all. I'm going to ask y'all a question in the chat. If somebody, if you felt like you was over somebody's house, number one, I ain't staying over nobody's house. I just ain't doing that. You know I me mean? We work and I'm going to the hotel, you know, get me a room or something. I need my own space. But if you felt like you were drugged and you passed out and you woke up the next morning in the bed with strangers you feel like with strangers at that particular time what is your first move i'm asking the chat what's your first move what you gonna do because i just want to know the common approach to what that is what's, what's your first move crystal hope says she leaving boom leave miss matthew says she leaving and going call the police I'm Carla Shepard says she leaving and going to call the police. Right. You, you, were, you were, you were wronged. You were wronged. And so, um, from that, like I said, we got, you know, three people, three women who basically saying, yo, they would have left and called the police right now. I'm not trying to question as to what it is. Little Rob should have, shouldn't have done. Right. Uh, Lawson and all say I'm out like last year. Ryan said, Ryan Rich said he's going to exit. This is the common sense approach, dude. You was drugged. You don't remember what happened last night. You woke up with a, with a man and two, your alleged two sex workers in the bed. But then later on, come 2024, listen, y'all, come 2024, this lawsuit is filed based on the fact that Little Rod did not get paid, right? And now all of a sudden, the pictures that he took on February 2nd, 2023 after being in the bed with the two sex workers and diddy he now says he gonna use that to show that these women were, were sex workers you understand what i'm saying so you said all oh, y'all under the same that you would have opportunity to leave uh uh the rule is back. I, I respect what you're saying, but the rule is back. So what you're telling me is the five months after that, 
because you got to come in here. We're dealing with nothing but facts, right? This is according to Little Rod's affidavit. So the five months after February 2nd, uh, 2023, Little Rod alleged that the same thing happened again. And he was forced to drink uh, a liquor that was um, laced with uh, uh, ecstasy, he said, right? Listen, now, I want you to understand something. In that five-month period, Little Rod didn't have a chance to leave. So he was being held against his will now? Because that's not one of the allegations made in the lawsuit, if you will. So, like I said, once again, we're talking about facts as it relates to the affidavit that was put out by Little Rod. We're not saying that Diddy's innocent. We're not saying Diddy is guilty, right? But we, you know, over here in straight game, we're trying to wait for the proof. We're looking for the proof to be handed out and so that we can understand what is actually being, uh, what can be proven. Because anybody can say anything. Like I said, once again, even though O.J. Simpson was found innocent, right? They, people say, well, he's, he did it. He still did it. I mean, you know, it, that's what you want to believe. It's okay. According to the evidence, right? You know, um, it was reported that, yo, he was, you know, uh, uh, found innocent of those charges at that particular time. Well, a civilian and, and wanted to play a little bit more than the keyboards in, in, in the circle, if you will. Or, or produce a little bit more than just music. And because, like I said, once again, Little Rod said he volunteered to be Diddy's a, 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 a cameraman, if you will. Absolutely. Hey, Capone, I, I, I totally agree with you. A lot of people feel the same way. So, like I said, from $50,000, right, to a $30 million lawsuit. The $50,000 was initially what Little Rod was trying to raise in his GoFundMe as of today, uh, according to uh, on uh, by April 11th of this year, um, the GoFundMe that Little Rod had um, put up has only raised uh, approximately four, $4,900, if you will. It probably is a little bit more than that now, but that's all it had raised. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. And once again, you know, it was alleged that, you know, he was, you know, feeding underage girls, you know, um, drinks and, and alcohol and things like that. Once again, none of these things have been proven. Right. Then they go to the to, to Christian Combs and they like well, they go on this yacht. And now they're talking about this girl who wanted to be a singer or whatever. Now something allegedly happened to her. Didn't really was nothing didn't really happen as far as anything that I I read involved in that situation. But it was alleged that uh, uh, Christian Combs was trying to force her to do something and so on and so forth. She wanted to be have a, 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 a career in the music industry and so on and so forth. She was fired from her job. Um, she didn't file any kind of uh, action against her job for firing her for what she said was retaliation at that particular time. And then all of a sudden the Cassie lawsuit comes out and now here comes this young lady who you know, she's alleging something happened to her. Like I said, this is the same lawyer who filed the little rise lawsuit. So like I said, you know, the, the journey is, 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 um, mysterious and kind of, um, yeah, it's, it, it's something not adding up, man. Fatima Barrett, how you doing? Nandy Johnston, A Capone, Crystal Hope, Rael, um, Right. I, I don't I don't I don't believe that um that Christian Combs did anything either from that perspective, based on the fact that there was a lawsuit filed after Little Rod's lawsuit from that pers perspective. And the key person in the young lady's lawsuit, or should I say the key witness in the, little, the young lady's lawsuit that was filed is Little Rod. You understand what I'm saying? So Little Rod's lawsuit would have to be. Uh, successful first, in which now U Universal and, and uh, Sir Lucian Grange have filed a motion uh, to be removed from the lawsuit. Um, and like I said, if that motion is granted, then it weakens the lawsuit even more because it, it, it'll show that they were basically trying to grasp at straws, if you will.
What's up, Ramona, Ramona Carolina Jones? Um, yeah. You, what you say, Crystal Hope? I ain't about to get out. What? What's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah. He said going after Diddy. Carl said going after Diddy. <laughs> next is kids. Next is pets. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, like I said, I just want you know, we, like I said, I don't. I'm not no predictor of what's gonna happen, and you know, all I'm looking at is what led up to this thirty million dollar lawsuit being filed. Right. You know, um, did little Rod go to the lawyer or did the lawyer see that little Rod was online and go to him and say, hey, you know, um, yeah, you know, we, we could file a lawsuit. You know, we can mimic it after. the So what did you witness? Do you have any video? Blah, blah, blah. Once again, I think that they were hoping uh, uh, Mr. Blackburn was hoping for a quick settlement in this little rise lawsuit but it does not look like it's gonna happen that way it's been over 30 days you know um no i would say yeah a little bit what's that a little bit under 30 days yeah a little bit under 30 days if you will and they still have not settled yet i mean definitely not for 30 million dollars you know what i mean like i said once again when you think about the situation involving cassie totally different situation totally different situation and then bringing up everything else, you know, my thing is, what's what's the, uh, you know, you got what the Keefe D trial coming up? They're gonna be mentioning Diddy in the Keefe D trial, so just a, it's just a lot of things that that are gonna, you know, um, and so and then as far as Diddy's career goes, you know what I mean? Yeah, this 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 basically them wiped out his career as we know it. Like I said, from selling any records, you know, the the, the liquor deal is gone. You know, Sean John has been yanked from the store shelves. Um, you know, the radio play has been, you know, cut down, if you will, you know, and, and trying to generate a, a publishing and things like that from the music. So, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. And then now everybody's out for the money grab, the money grab, the money grab. Right. My question to you guys is. Do you think that if Diddy would have paid him that fifty thousand dollars that we would be here at this particular time? Uh, witnessing what we're witnessing and do you think that diddy would have uh, received this lawsuit coming from little rod rico absolutely that's what we, that's what i was saying that when 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 diddy's lawyer basically was saying he was trying diddy's lawyer was trying to meet with little rod's lawyer basically saying that they have proof that what little rod was alleging and telling his lawyer wasn't true but little rod's lawyer didn't want to see that and so like I said, once again, doing if, if this if this goes to trial and it's not dismissed um, um, for basically lack of evidence or whatever, if it goes to trial, oh, that will be shown and or, or basically shared as part of the discovery. Right. And so, you know, if if they I'm gonna, let me give it to you like this, if they if Diddy them have tapes of Little Rod with a girl's hand in his hand right with a girl's hand in his hand walk into any of those bedrooms any of those anything going you know into the room when he basically alleged that he was drugged and he wasn't drugged it's a wrap and then you're going to see sanctions against mr blackburn then you're going to see you know uh i mean which would be sanctions yeah from that perspective but then you would i don't even think you would see uh defamation lawsuits against little rod because at that particular time from what he's basically saying he really doesn't have any money but this is the slippery slope that that they're dealing with right now i'm telling you right now if diddy got any you go to court let's that yes let's say you know it goes to court and what sean holly and diddy was trying to show mr blackburn you know, and trying to meet up and show that they had evidence that what Little Rob was saying wasn't true. If they got any, any, you know, usually videotape is time stamp, right? If they have any time stamp, stamp videotape in and around July 2nd, because evidently Little Rod got the date from whatever he took a phone, the pictures that he took while he said he was in the bed, woke up in the bed with the two sex workers and Diddy was in the bed on February 2nd, right? If Diddy has any video 
of Little Rod walk into that room with those young ladies and being in that room with those young ladies and not having had been drugged like he alleged, this is what you're dealing with. This is what, you know, the, the, the facts versus what people would say. If that's the case, and I'm, let me tell you, if that's the case, Diddy's career um, will, will partially be, you know, like, okay, that was a lie, you know, but then people will always revert back to the Cassie situation, if you will, right? But that would be, you know, basically saying like, hey, hold on, you know what? Um, you know, the, you know, it was a money grab after the Cassie situation because the Cassie situation was settled, so we know what that was about, you know? Absolutely. Right, right, Carla Shepard. We wouldn't be discussing no lawsuit if he would have paid in defense. Because he said his he said as much. He basically said, yo, if Diddy would have if basically he said if Diddy, what would he say? Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications, uh, to dry out my funds and have me negotiation out of this negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. So basically, like it's like somebody saying, you know what, man, you forcing me to, you know, um, show you this proof you forcing me to you know um let it be known like you know whatever and like i said once again when you when you look at the lawsuit it was like you know i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell that you was you know you know um uh dealing with these women you know what i mean like i said it, yeah it's it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy and so yeah that's the that's the thing like i said to be caught or or, or waking up two times in the room with alleged sex workers, right? On February 2nd, 2023, and then five months later and not leaving the situation after the first time, after you said that, yo, did he drug them? He said, did he drug them on February 2nd, 2023, right? He wake up in the room. He don't know what's going on. It's, it's, it's him in the bed, two sex workers, and did he in the bed together, right? He said, boom, I got pictures of the two sex workers in the bed. I took pictures. So that's how he was able to come up with the dates. In his affidavit, right? He got drugged. Little Rod does not leave, does not make a police report. You know what I mean? He stays around for whatever reason. He thought that he should stay around. We don't know that reason. I think that'll be something that'll be dealt with when he goes to court. Five months later, on July 2nd, right? The same thing happens, right? He said, you know, this time he was forced to drink. Um, alcohol that was laced what he think was with ecstasy right this time he passes out again he passes out this time he passes out he passes out and he wakes up and it's one sex worker and him in the bed together right and so now that's two times in six months yeah and so the, the, the lawsuit that was filed looks like the same lawsuit that Cassie filed, same allegations, um, you know, same language being used and even partially uh, uh, conversations about that. What, what uh, Little Rod said he allegedly had with Diddy in regards to the Jennifer Lopez situation, uh, the situation involving the shooting um, at the nightclub in New York back in, uh, I think, it was 99, if you will. And so, yeah. Yeah, this this is this is this is crazy. This is crazy. But this is the journey, man. This is the journey. I I, I would hope we you know it gets resolved in a manner in which you know is is revealing to all, should I say? Because like I said, ain't nothing wrong. I mean, ain't nothing worse than having somebody make uh, false accusations against you, and ain't nothing uh, uh, um, like having, I guess, somebody um, assaulting you in that manner from that perspective. You know, um, my thing is, you know, the Cuba Gooding Jr. situation, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s name was brought up in the lawsuit too. And I'm just wondering like, well, how long was Cuba Gooding Jr. there? Like how long was it? Was it a night after night type deal? Was it, you know, some other situation where, you know, it was like, they were saying that, you know, Little Rod said basically he was being groomed to be handed off to Cuba Gooding Jr. And like I said, once again, these sex workers 
they did not describe them as male or female. But when Little Rod took the pictures of them on February 2nd, right? He said he got pictures of the two sex workers. I'm thinking most likely they females from that perspective. You know what I mean? You know, so when we're talking about that, that's the thing that we're talking about. So I'm, I'm going to ask y'all that question. So the pictures that Little Rod got of the two sex workers, right? The pictures that he said he took of the two sex workers that he could show the judge in court. Do you think that they're male or they're female? Because they've never said that. Based on the fact that Little Rod took a picture of them. I would say they're female. Miss Matthews said they're male. You funny. <laughs> uh, I, right. I would say they, 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 right. You know what I mean? Um, but you, you just, you just, you, you just never know. You just never know. Right. Bro Brownsville, Brooklyn say they're male. Say, ooh. Yeah. We talked about that earlier, uh, earlier, uh, Rico, that they brung up Prince Harry, um, 50 cents baby mama. Um, you know, like I said, the allegations of, um, athletes, you know, uh, politicians, and all of the other people that uh, Little Rod had alleged that P. Diddy has um, compromising tapes in regards to them being in compromising positions, allegedly, from that perspective. But like I said, a lot of the parties, if you and, and they, they had released uh, information in regards to a lot of the parties that... um p did he had and like when you look at the parties that he had like a day jay-z and all of them were there, those were like galas those were like like you know you had everybody there and it didn't seem like to me that anything and like i said i don't know but it didn't appear to me that anything like that would be going on with those type of people now they might have had like private parties those situations and things like that that we don't know nothing about but the thing that the tape that they released showing that you know people pulling up to the party, you know, everybody, you know, was going to a Diddy party. Diddy been throwing parties since shit, but 96, you know? So from that perspective, yeah, you know, but like I said, once again, the salaciousness of the allegations, you know, makes it even more juicier when you sit back and you pay attention to what's being alleged, you know, oh, then LeBron, they found the, the, the uh, you know, the tape of LeBron James saying, ain't no party like a Diddy party, you know? And based on the salacious, salaciousness of the allegations, you know, people immediately run to the fact that, oh, they might got LeBron James on tape. I'm like, nah, I mean, we seen, look, they had video with LeBron James attending one of the parties. And he was with his woman. His wife, should I say. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of the, the stuff that's being, you know, kind of danced in front of us, you know, these little, these little dangling of the carrots and things like that, I, I really don't think have any substance, if you will. But it's 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 good entertainment, you know what I mean, if you will. But um, I'm I'm thinking, yo, at the end of the day, if they had something, number one, they wouldn't have subpoenaed Young Miami, right? You know, if you if they had some like concrete evidence, they wouldn't have subpoenaed Young Miami, you know, to see what she has to say. Um, you know, from that perspective, being able to say somebody did something right and being able to prove it are two different things, especially when you're dealing with somebody like Diddy who got deep pockets and can hire the best lawyers. You know what I mean? Yeah, but LeBron was with his wife. He wasn't he wasn't at the party like that. You know what I mean? People, you know what I mean? People, people, people trying to put, you know, they trying to put a spin on it. You know what I mean? Because you know, if somebody with a name, you know, once again, if somebody with a name is attached, they attach Prince Harry. Like, what did Prince Harry have to do with? Um, anything involving Little Rod situation. Prince Harry's name was added to the lawsuit for publicity reasons. And that's why the judge, uh, 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 Judge Cote, I believe, um, the federal judge basically said that Little Rod's attorney was filing cases, um, you know, tr trying to get, you know, publicity and get his name out there as an attorney, as well as um, making salacious allegations against um, the defendants in order to try to force settlements. And I don't think that it's going to work in this particular case. I just don't because it hasn't worked thus far. And Universal and uh, Sir Lucian Grange, they fighting back, which I think um, 
the, having them included in the lawsuit was just uh, overreach, if you will. You know what I mean? Like, what did Universal have to do with the sex workers at Diddy House? You know what I mean? You, you understand what I'm saying? So what, what does Universal Music Group have to do with sex workers being at Diddy House? If you will. Right. And so on two occasions, you know what I mean? You know, um, if there's no link to any kind of financial um, situation involving uh, them paying sex workers, you know, what the hell does that guy? You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, they No, no. They, where's the, where's the proof that they funded the parties? They didn't fund no parties. Right? How, what party did they fund? There was so, some some writers camp or something like that that they were they alleged in the recent filing of the affidavit. But what party did they fund? And you know you have to prove a paper trail, right? Listen, Little Rod said people would somebody brought cash to the party. People were paid in cash. You have to a paper trail. You can't just say, oh yeah, they funded the party because. I seen a couple of people from the company that was there. That has nothing to do with that. Uh, uh, Sandy, Colorado, it, it doesn't. They sponsored what? You have to prove that. You can't just say that. It's not like in the public where you want to say something and everything that you say is going to work out and going to go because you made you made that statement from that perspective. You understand what I'm saying? You know, you have to actually have some provide proof receipts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, uh Jeanette, uh, what's that? Janadrian, Janadrian. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, so when you when we talking about when we talking about that, like like I said, how do you prove that people were drugged if they did not go to the police after they were drugged? And so that's another thing that I asked. Little Rod said that he first was drugged on February second, twenty twenty three. My question is, why didn't Little Rod go to the police? You know, if he was drugged, why did he stay around five months? Now, only he knows that. We don't know that, right? That's the question based on the information that we obtained through his affidavit. See, we wouldn't be able to ask, ask these questions if it wasn't contained in his affidavit that he just, they, they, they just submitted to the court, right? Trying to bolster his credibility. So by that being what that is, understanding um, where is the proof? CT, nobody's sure of anything, you know what I mean, other than what has been written, right? Like I said, people saying that somebody funded something, once again, you can be a sponsor, but a sponsor is not responsible for paying a sex worker unless the money you can show that the paper trail leads to them directly paying paying that person they could be just as oblivious to anything as anybody else there at that particular time my 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 my, my point be dot right see what i'm saying <laughs> Did any did even did any sex workers come out and say that they was being drugged? You know, this is the thing that I'm that's that's what I'm talking about. So if 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 all they have is Little Rod's word, like I said, we don't know. Little Rod's word, and like I said, um, you know, yeah, nobody came out. No, no, nobody else, no sex workers came out. You know, if they was getting, you know, three bands, five bands, ten bands, you know, to come to the party and do what, you know, and know that it's, you know. You know, we're going we're gonna to do what we what they do. You know what I mean? And, and, and from that perspective, then I don't think anybody felt like, you know, that they were being wronged at that particular time. It is what it is. You know? So from that perspective, yeah. We, 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 got, a, we got a conundrum on our hands. And like I said, it's been a lot of media attention ever since O.J. Simpson died. You know, the Diddy thing is kind of like, you know, dwindled down a little bit, you know? You know, um, Little Rod's lawyer, Mr. Blackburn, you know, he, you know, he tries to make little filings, you know, hoping that the media going to cover it. But like I said, I think the media itself is starting to see through what it is because, you know, I got a lot of lawyers that work for these media companies. Right. 
kind of starting to see through it. Um, I heard uh, Chris Cuomo, who used to work on CNN. Chris Cuomo is a lawyer also. And Chris Cuomo basically said that, um, yeah, you know, this doesn't look, this looks like a nothing burger, if you will. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, you know, because, you know, probability, I mean, the, a probable cause is, is a real loose term as far as doing a search on somebody's house. You know, that, that's a real low level of, of, of um, proof to, you know, ex execute a search with the Homeland Security when they went to Diddy's house, right? You don't really need that much for that, right? But like I said, it was a big show of force. The media was there. You can kind of see like it was kind of set up that way um, to be the spectacle that it's become, right? Yeah, I'm, and absolutely, uh, Kel, I'm sure the people that was there, if they was dealing under the whatever, they signed NDAs and they weren't paid through any kind of, um, you know, apparatus that would, would basically lead to a paper trail, if you will. You know, if they doing that kind of stuff, you feel me? Uh, the full complaint, you can go to uh, the court. I mean, it's online if you go to a couple of these YouTube channels. But like I said, all you have to do is go and look up the um, the case. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Little Rod or Rodney Jones uh, uh, versus, you know, uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs case. All you got to do is go online and you can see that. So, like I said, yo, we're going to see what happens, man. But, um, yeah, that's that's the get down, you know, with that. But more importantly, when you read into what Little Rod said, you know, from the infancy of what was his complaint or before the complaint was filed in court, you know, I'm I'm starting to believe that, um, you know, the, the, the lawsuit that Cassie filed, they looked at the lawsuit, they kind of copied it, and then they came up with these things that they were saying that happened involving sex workers and all of that, because that's the same language that was in the Cassie lawsuit. And, and Little Rod's initial f um, for his GoFundMe statement, like I said, I'm going to read this. Little, Little Rod for his GoFundMe statement basically said, before any lawsuit was filed, right, before anything was said, Little Rod said, I find myself fighting for my producer's rates, money, publishing shares, and royalties for works done on this project, wrote uh, uh, Jones, basically. Uh, for the better part of the past six months, my team and I have extended our, every opportunity we knew possible to have these matters addressed and resolved fairly, but in private. However, Diddy's negotiation tactics to stall communications, dry out my funds, and have me negotiation, negotiating out of desperation or without a real means of fighting back has forced me here. So basically what his statement is, if Diddy would have paid me my money, my $50,000 gave me my publishing share, my royalties for working on the album, you know what? There wouldn't even be a lawsuit. And as of today, um, the lawsuit, I mean, the uh, GoFundMe, uh, the goal was $50,000, the same amount of money that Little Rod said that he was owed, but he said at that particular time he needed that fifty to try to find a lawyer to sue Diddy. Now, if he was going to sue Diddy, it would have been for publishing royalties and all of that. Now, you think about that. If he's suing for $50,000, let's say that he wanted to sue for his royalties and all of that, he would only be suing for $50,000. He stated that. What lawyer is really going to take a case that's suing for $50,000? That's not no money because how much money the lawyer going to get? Right? And little Rod basically got a GoFundMe going. So that means that he didn't have the capital to be able to hire a private attorney at that particular time. Right? So, so how do you get money? You come up with another lawsuit and then you come out with these sex workers things and all of that. Like I said, I'm not denying that what Lil Rod's saying is true, but we're going to need to see the proof for us to be really, truly uh, uh, convinced that that's what it is. You understand what I'm saying? So, like I said, at the end of the day, we're going to have to be able to, 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 be able to, to um, figure that one out for ourselves once we, we see the proof. Like I said, a lot of people have been jumping out here, you know, just making these old crazy accusations involving the situation and really not dealing with the facts or not. Um, they listening to what's being said, but they're not listening to what's not being said. 
you know, I, I like to listen to what's not being said. You know, you hear somebody say something, right? I want to know uh, and understand what's not being said to help me come to a conclusion as to whether it leans to the point of being factual or, you know, it's a little bit of cap going on involved. You know what I mean? It's a little cap, what they say, a little bit capping going on. You know what I mean? For, you know, capping for a dollar, you know, but we all know that them sex workers, if, if they are sex workers, right, uh, was over there doing a little something strange for some change. You know what I mean? And did he got that kind of money where, you know, hey, you know, this is what we doing. One more question I got to ask y'all. Little Rod, on February 2nd, 2023, Little Rod said he got pictures of the two sex workers that were in the bed with him and Diddy once he woke up because he said he was drugged that night and he basically fainted. When he came to, he's basically saying, yo, when I came to, I was in the bed. It was him, two sex workers, and Diddy all in the bed together, right? And then Little Rod said he took a picture of the two sex workers in which he said in the affidavit that he would be willing to show to the court if they needed proof, right? Do you think that at the time that Little Rod took those pictures, that he was intending to use them in this case? Male or female, Miss Matthews, at the time that he took those the pictures of the two sex workers that he had said he took the two pictures of, right? And it was in the um do you do you believe that he intended to use them in this particular case? Right, Rico, you get it. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's not about seeing for yourself. I want to see for myself too, also. Uh, uh, but more importantly, he said he took pictures of the two sex workers on February 2nd, 2023, after he woke up. He said he think that did he drugged him. He woke up. It was him. Little Rod, two sex workers, and Diddy in the bed. Rod, Little Rod then proceeds to take pictures of just the two sex workers, right? February 2nd, 2023, July 2nd, 2023, the same thing happens again. This time, he wakes up, and there's one sex worker in the bed, right? You know, you would think, and this is like, you know, this common sense. You would think if I'm somewhere else, right, or I'm in the same place or whatever, a different place, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, people start coming over the house and you're like, uh-oh, you know, it could be sex workers again. You know, it's the same thing going to happen. You know, you start to ask yourself a question. These are just common sense questions, common sense approaches to something that should be really understood from that perspective. It doesn't jive at all, Miss Matthews. You, you, you get what I'm saying. You know, so if you were drugged on February 2nd, 20, uh, uh, 2023, right, you know, and you woke up with two sex workers in the bed with you, two sex workers and Diddy, right? Five months go past. And then here come again. But this time he said, yo, I was forced to drink um, uh, daily on liquor. And it was um, spiked with ecstasy. He thinks, he believes, he doesn't have proof. He believes that that's what happened. And this time, he wakes up the next morning with just one sex worker and him in the bed. So my question is this. When they started to drink, before, you know, the, you, you fainted or whatever happened, or the, whatever happened, you know, from whatever happened, you know how that is. Before you went out, fell out, walked to the room with the girl, whatever you did, right? When you seen the people come to the location wherever they were, when those people, these, these sex workers or these people start to come in again, then it didn't it raise a red flag like, yo, you know what? Yeah, I think the same thing about to happen that happened last time, yo. I really don't want to be here for this. Let me get up out of here. No? And then to wake up the next morning and say, yo, um, I was in the bed with one sex worker this time, not Diddy and the other two sex workers. And that was on July 2nd, 2023. It doesn't add up. But like I said, we're only going off of the facts that has been given to us in the um, affidavit that Little Rod wrote, as well as the case filing, the, the, the actual case, the actual civil case that was filed. And so I know that's why Diddy and them have not settled yet. 
That's why Universal and Sir Lucian Grange is actually uh, filed. They actually filed the motion to fight this situation because it just don't add up. And like I said to you, and I'm going to say it one more time, I'm going to leave you with this. If Diddy's lawyer, Sean Holly, if they have video from inside that house, we seen when the uh, Homeland Security went inside the house, how they had Justin and uh, a Christian in the house up against the wall. We seen those videotapes. Evidently, those videotapes were still running while the Homeland Security was in the house. And we also seen how they went in the cabinet where it looked like a bunch of electronics were run, you know, where the, 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 the panel of electricity or, you know, video cameras or whatever were all hooked up to. Despite that being what that was, Diddy and them was still able to get out the footage of Christian and Justin, right? Being pent up against the wall um, at gunpoint and all of those things, right? They were still able to have that footage and get it out to the public. Now, on February 2nd, 2023, Lil Rod said he think he was drugged. He woke up in the bed with Diddy and two sex workers, right? If on 2023, if Diddy them have any footage of Little Rod walking willfully, um, consensually to a room with any alleged sex, a uh, 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 young lady or whatever have you, it's case closed. Because he said he passed out. Right? And then he woke up and he didn't know where he was at. Or, or no, he didn't, he, he didn't know what happened. I mean, I'm sorry. Right? Or if there's any evidence from July 2nd, stayed in the same thing, it's case closed. Yeah. Your boy Delray, straight game. Thank you for everybody that came through tonight. Appreciate you.